Hello and welcome for those of you who are new to the channel. I basically talk about animals in captivity or in the wild whilst I create a hairstyle. Today is going to be very simple because all I'm going to do is take this out. I've seen loads of videos, especially on TikTok, that sleep in this and then in the morning it looks amazing. So I don't know if it's going to work. I just used a scarf and basically just wrapped around the hair and then re-wrapped it all the way up again. So <laughs> we shall reveal and hopefully it won't look like a complete mess. We shall see. As the title suggests, we are going to be talking about a marine land in France. And I've been meaning to talk about this one for quite some time. So please stay tuned. So the park was actually founded in 1970 by Roland de la Poipe, I think that's how you say it, in the French Riviera. So a few of the orcas there, one of them's called Wiki, Anouk, Moana, and I think you pronounce it KG or Kajo. So it was in 2011 that Wiki gave birth to Moana. Not actually a female, because I know the movie Moana is a female, but uh, no, this orca was actually a boy. So I actually found an article that launched a campaign for the whale Anouk, and it was called A Life for Anouk. So unfortunately, he had quite a lot of trouble with his teeth. They actually got someone in to sort of examine him, and they said that they haven't seen a, a jaw quite as bad as this. And unfortunately, he had to lose all of his teeth. An interesting fact that I found about Wiki, apparently, was the first talking orca. I will show you a clip here. Apparently, she says one, two, three, and she can say hello and a few other things. I mean, you watch the video and see if she's actually talking or whether she's just kind of mimicking sounds to sound like us. I don't know, but it was quite an interesting video to find. Meet Wiki, the world's first talking killer whale, who can say words like hello and bye-bye. Hello! Whales are known for impressive communication skills, which allow pods to talk to each other through complex clicks and singing, even when they're 100 miles apart. But a new experiment has shown the mammals are also apparently capable of mimicking human speech, a feat that was previously believed to be limited to primates, birds, elephants, dolphins and seals, not to mention dogs. Scientists say they have recorded Wiki repeating the words hello, bye-bye, counting up to three, and even saying the name of her trainer, Amy. Hello! Hello! because whales do not have the same vocal ability as humans. So, something quite awful happened to the park in 2015. There was a huge storm that pretty much flooded the entire French Riviera. At least 16 people have been killed after flash flooding along parts of the French Riviera caused by torrential rain. The downpour hit the Alps Maritime region, which lies at the eastern end of France's Mediterranean coast and borders Italy, on Saturday evening. The first victims were three people killed at a retirement home that was flooded in Bio. In the resort town of Cannes, which hosts the annual film festival, the train station was flooded, leading to the interruption of local rail services, while cars were swept along streets by torrents. The Palais des Festivals parking was flooded, and torrential rain prevented cars from driving. The flooding led to the closure of a local stretch of the A8 motorway, and left thousands of homes without electricity. It destroyed so many homes 
even people lost their lives and the marine land also unfortunately got completely flooded and the worst part is it was dragging in all of this dirty water just loads and loads of mud and i'll put some photos here of what the park actually looked like now the problem was the water knocked out the power systems and some of those systems was pumping oxygen into the tanks and sort of making sure that lots of fresh water was being filtered through. So many animals unfortunately did die. A lot of them got swept away. There was one poor turtle that was found in the dolphin enclosure stuck in the filtration system, which can't have been very nice. I know a lot of animals that died was stingrays, tropical fish, sharks as well. And it was about 10 days after that the orca called Valentine actually died as well. And they got a veterinary pathologist in called James Barnett um, to have a look and see, you know, what the problem was. And he had a twisted intestine, which apparently can happen if there are too many strange movements or like such as rolling. Um, it can be something to do with diet as well but lots of people think it might be because of the storm obviously if these waves were massive and they were crashing down then i'm guessing valentine would be rolling around perhaps in ways that he wouldn't usually be doing um what was quite sad though is four months earlier um his mother passed away as well so that was quite sad I mean, obviously, there was loads of uproar because lots of animal activists were like, well, this would never have happened if they weren't in captivity, um, which, yes, you know, I agree with. But, um, you know, it wasn't their fault that a, a, a massive storm decided to, to come and destroy most of the marine park. So I think getting the electrical systems up um, took quite a long time. And apparently they did ask SeaWorld for a bit of help. And uh, apparently they said, yeah, yeah, we're helping them but they didn't actually say how they're helping. They, they never really, I couldn't find anywhere that said, oh yeah, SeaWorld helped and this is what they did. They just said, yep, we're helping. I'm like, oh, okay. So that was all I could find on that. So there were a few incidents that happened at this park. And one of these videos I've actually used before. And um, it was an attack that happened in 2008. But I couldn't really find out what the trainer was or who the trainer was, sorry. On Wikipedia, it just said an unidentified trainer aged 26. And you can see the whales kind of jumping on top, pushing them down. And I think this happened quite a few times before they were able to kind of get to the side and get out, thankfully. But uh, I'll, I'll put the video here. So that orca was actually called Freya and she was the mother of Valentine. She obviously just got a little bit fed up during one of the shows, well, like so many others that we've seen. And just quickly, um, this is turning out to be quite interesting. It's, wow, look at that. <laughs> that's, um, that's pretty, that's pretty curly. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll brush it out later. We'll, we'll leave it for now. There was another incident in 1970 with an orca called Kim. Again, I couldn't find out exactly who the trainer was, but they got dragged to the bottom and held there for quite a long time before letting go. And apparently this incident was pretty much ignored. 
So Kim's story also isn't great, unfortunately. Um, he had a lot of health issues and eventually they got so bad that he went blind and they were trying to sort of help him and he had injections in his eyes. They tried a blood transfusion, but unfortunately the blood wasn't compatible. So again, they asked SeaWorld or can you help out? And apparently they just uh, denied any help. So unfortunately, Kim did actually pass away due to a lung abscess, aged just 14. All right, we are moving on to an orca called Calypso, who was captured in 1969 near Pender Harbour in British Columbia. She was then taken to the zoo in England, yeah, called Cleethorpes, and she was there for a few months whilst her main tank in France was being fixed because apparently there was loads of leaks. So until that time, her temporary home was in this zoo. And finally, when she did arrive at the park, she wasn't there for very long before she died. It was only a year after that she unfortunately passed away. And it was actually at this zoo that they started the artificial insemination. Yeah. So that was around the 70s. But the only first successful one at Marineland Antibes was in 2011, and that was Moana. That's a, that's a long, long time of unsuccessful birth. And I just think each individual orca who kept on, you know, either producing stillbirths or having miscarriages um, would have been quite distressful. So we're just going to quickly touch a little bit about this zoo, because I thought, oh yeah, a zoo in England that had marine mammals, let's have a look. And originally it had just three pools. The main one was used for the dolphins and the shows that they had there. And the other two, I think one of them would have sea lions. And then the third was sometimes used as a temporary housing. Um, I think there was a beluga whale there for a bit. And then of course, Calypso was there for a while as well. And um, I did look, I did find these videos, which um, we'll talk about after, but I'll, I'll show them here now. This is Movie Turn. Leslie Mitchell reporting. If you go to the Marine Land and Zoo at Cleethorpes in Lincolnshire, you'll be able to see one of the rarest animals in the world, a white whale. Many so-called white whales are in fact grey. But this is an authentic snow white beluga, the only one in captivity in Europe. And this is Jean Haig, who plays a very important part in the life of the Cleethorpes whale. For five weeks after its arrival from the St. Lawrence River, it went off its food and refused to settle down. So Jean took on the job of making friends, helping to bring reassurance. I then found this other video of how back then they used to transfer certain animals and this was a dolphin. Problem. How do you set about transferring two dolphins from one pool to another? Answer. Jump in the water with a net. A very large net. If that sounds and looks too easy, just remember that dolphins are considered highly intelligent. Perhaps they even understand the difficulties involved and don't offer any resistance when the cradle journey from their old home in Malton, Yorkshire, begins. No tearjerker this, just that a dolphin like Moby needs constant attention on the journey to the new marine land at Cleethorpes. Out of water, a dolphin's skin can crack unless constantly moistened. It's not just a question of sponging on human sympathy. There are only six dolphins in captivity in England. Moby and his 25 stone companion Peely will be taught some of the simpler crowd-pleasing tricks which these animals seem to learn so quickly. Too 
months ago, Moby and Feely had the freedom of the Mexican Gulf. Now they're land-based in a new artificially heated pool at a Lincolnshire resort with human company just to make them feel at home on the first day. There's even time to start learning a trick or two at mealtime. And there's no illusion either. I mean, one thing I've noticed about these videos, and that last video just made me smile, because <laughs> you've got this kind of really upbeat music in the background and some of the things that he was saying you know like oh yes you know it looks like it might be slightly traumatic but if I say it in a really upbeat voice then it makes it okay because <laughs> um, I mean you do see the dolphins thrashing around and there's not too much you can do to sugarcoat um, you know what's clearly going on there um, apart from, yeah, putting some nice music in the background and just kind of making it seem as though it's all normal and it's absolutely fine, even though you can clearly see the animal is in distress. And I love the video about the beluga whale, you know, oh, well, it's taking a while for them to get sorted because, you know, not eating, um, you know, not doing very well, but don't worry, I'm sure it will be fine. Um, and it was quite interesting because you're like, yes, yes, I, I can see it's taking a while for this poor beluga whale to, you know, settle down. I wonder why that is. <laughs> so apparently they do have close ties with SeaWorld. Even though they say they are a completely separate, different park, SeaWorld seems to crop up quite often um, because they mainly have the ties with the artificial insemination. That was one of the things that they had a contract with, you know, we're not entirely sure what the details were of the contract, but that means that they are definitely tied to marine land Antibes. And a lot of the orcas they got there, you know, were captured by SeaWorld. And one of them was called Clovis, who was taken from Penn Cove, that horrific capture in 1970 of quite a few orcas. And one of them was Lolita, and there was actually footage of that in the documentary Black Fish, where you can see they're stuck in all of the nets and you can hear the mothers are crying out for their children. It was not, not very nice to watch that one. So the Penn Cove captures were in 1970 and unfortunately Clovis only survived until 1973 at the age of four. So he didn't survive very long in captivity. In fact, he was captured at such a young age. I'm sure it was very traumatic for him. And this was quite interesting. We're going to talk about John Hargrove. Do you remember him who worked at the other marine land, that awful one in Canada? Well, he actually worked at Marineland Antibes from 2001 to 2002. And I found this interview on YouTube where he talks about his time there, what he saw, the quality of the water. And uh, yeah, it was quite, quite interesting that um, he's worked at these two different marine parks. Although hmm, I think the one in Canada is a lot worse. Still not great either of them but um but yes uh, there were obviously still issues that he managed to find at the france one and i'll just show some information here it was for the seasons of 2001 2002 and i was in a supervisor position uh, as the french would call agent de matrice so myself and another sea world trainer lindsay rubenkam she and i uh we were equal position and we both ran the killer whale facility in fact it was so horrific that I almost did not return for my second year. So I initially signed on for a two-year contract. And after my first year, the water quality was so terrible that first year, I told management that I was not going to return the second year unless they could guarantee me that they would fix the filtration system because it was so terrible. And what I mean by terrible is that uh, at SeaWorld, for example, and I don't want to use SeaWorld as a, as a quote-unquote good example because we all know that SeaWorld is still not good for captive orcas, but just to even show you the radical difference, all approximately 6 million gallons at uh, SeaWorld of California, Shamu Stadium, is turned over, it's exchanged about every five to six hours. This is what we were told by water quality. At Marineland in France, um, which is roughly about the same size, there are some differences of opinion of which facility is bigger, but roughly it's the same size, I can tell you, from swimming in it and doing so many 
in shows, but um, it would turn over, it would exchange every five to six days. So the result of that is that you have all this water that's essentially not moving because it's not. <laughs> so you're, you're having stagnant water and proof of the stagnant water is that we would have standing algae on the water. So think of a pond that's, you know, back in the woods somewhere and that's just water just sitting still, basically like water in a ditch from a rainstorm and the algae that collects that's what not only the whales were swimming with in every single day, but we, uh, at that time, it was Lindsay and myself that were swimming with the whales. Greenland either chose not to spend the money or they did not have the money to spend on a chilling system for the water. And for all I know is they don't have a chilling system on the water still. I'm not sure. I can't verify that. I just know that. Um, they didn't have it when I was there and up until 2008, when I really last had my true communication regularly with people with that facility, they still did not have it. Um, so with no chilling system on the water in the winter time, the temperature is okay for the whales. It's cold enough. It keeps the bacteria levels low enough, but in the summer it's so hot and with sanding algae on the water, the bacteria levels are so high that even myself, I kept getting these massive skin infections from the water. And they were so bad that I was on the highest dose topical and oral antibiotics. All the whales were so scalded and so burned by the chlorine, this massive amount of chlorine that had been injected into their pool nonstop overnight. None of the whales could open their eyes, even, even for feeding. So to feed them, we would have to touch the side of their face with a fish to let them know that we had food. And they would open their mouth still with their eyes closed, and we would feed them that way. And then sheets of skin began to just peel away from their heads and their back skin was just not even sloughing off, but just peeling off like just complete thick layers of skin. It was absolutely disgusting. So I think that storm would have been quite devastating. And I think trying to get the water systems back online again and filtering nice clean water would have taken quite a long time. And it was interesting because I did see another video of um, them trying to counteract what John Hargrove is saying and um, you know sort of obviously trying to defend themselves it's in French but there are subtitles at the bottom as well um, which I'll link below for you and it basically it's interesting because yes obviously they have something to say back to each query or question or whatever but the answers are still <sighs> They're all right. It's 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 kind of the an the only answers I feel that they could possibly give to try and defend themselves. But there weren't any sort of hardcore facts as to why what you know John is saying is just completely untrue. Um, it's more just this is the park's views on what they think. Um, and it's very difficult when it comes to water because there are so many people like, um, no, we don't use chlorine chlorine in our waters, and others are like, yes, we use chlorine, but it's not enough to be harmful but I guess when things do go wrong um, and perhaps the system does go down for a bit and the water gets very dirty um, how long does it take to filter the water through to make it clean again um, you know how much chlorine do they put through then is it the same amount or is it more because they need to get it clean quicker you know especially after this storm if they finally got the systems back online how long would it take um, and how many sort of chemicals would they have to put back in in order to clear it up? So I don't know enough <laughs> about the water that they use in aquariums. So I can't really comment too much about that. Um, obviously, you know, it, it is just what, you know, John is saying. Um, 
don't get me wrong, there are many other articles out there that believe they also use very harmful levels of chlorine as well. Um, and I guess even if you're using a very low dose of something, um, you know, I wonder still if you're in a low dose of a chemical for 20 years, in the long run, can it cause problems? Um, I don't know, but you know, <laughs> they're not lasting very long. There's only a few orcas that make it to a, a grand old age, like poor Lolita. And I'm now going to brush out this hair because it's a little bit crazy. So I'm gonna brush it out and we'll see what it looks like. It's a, wow, it's a lot curly than I thought it was going to be. Ow. That's kind of cool though. I do like it. Wow. <laughs> uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, okay. If you ever see this on TikTok, um, give it a go because it does work and it's really kind of cool. So that's the hairstyle for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, if you have any comments of other marine parks that you would like me to talk about, then feel free to post below. I have a few ideas um, for this year, but I'm always excited to hear about one that I haven't even thought of. So yes, please comment below. Oh, and I forgot to say, I hope everyone had an amazing Christmas. Welcome to 2022, and I will see you in a few weeks.